Good day everyone and welcome to COM4809 Advanced Research Report. This video acts as the orientation class for COM4809 and we would like to talk you through the module and what to expect. The bolts and nuts of how it all works together for this year. Obviously, what we say here is written in Tutorial Letter 101 as well, but this orientation video will help you get an overview of the module and what it is all about. Firstly, let me start by introducing us. The module coordinators for COM4809 is myself and Professor Viola Milton. Professor Milton and I do not work alone. All staff members in the Department of Communication Science form part of COM4809. The reason for this is that each student of COM4809 is assigned a supervisor. Here is how it works. As a student, what you need to do in order to receive a supervisor is submit Form 1 on time. We are not able to assign supervisors on an ad hoc basis in the year, so we need to know who is committed to working with a supervisor for every assignment and in every step of the way of this research process. Therefore, submit Form 1 if you are interested in working with a supervisor this year. After you have submitted the form, we will inform you about who in the department has been appointed as your supervisor and how you can contact this person. You will work with this supervisor throughout the year. We will let you know via Myonisa who has been appointed to you. Good. Now let's quickly talk a little bit about your supervisor and about supervision. What is a supervisor? Well, a supervisor is there to oversee your project and to offer advice regarding the direction of your research and the research choices that you execute. Now, take note here, this person is not a teacher or even a lecturer, they are a supervisor. As the name suggests, we expect you to be able to work independently in this module. It is actually a competency that you should be able to display as a prospective honours graduate. Too often do we encounter student expectations that are unrealistic. See, your supervisor is not there to ensure you pass. The onus is not on them. It is, and always will be, on you. You are, after all, the one whose qualification is on the line here. So, in terms of COM4809, you can expect your supervisor to mark all of your uh, work. Your One supervisor will mark all of your assignments submitted. You can ask your supervisor any questions regarding your work and the content of COM4809 in order to discuss any problem areas or aspects that you are unsure about. Now here I need to make something clear again. Remember how we said that your supervisor is not a teacher, for example? Well, that is because your supervisor is not here to teach you all about research. Your previous years of study is the basis for that. For example, your undergraduate degree or other honours modules that you may have already completed. So, a typical question to your supervisor should not be, please explain to me what a unit of analysis is. Rather, a typical question should be, I think in my research specifically, the units of analysis are the smallest block of text examined in the content analysis. I know this can be either words or sentences, but I want to know, can I have words as the units of analysis for my tweets and sentences for the units of analysis for my selected media articles that I plan to analyze? Do you see the difference here? Your supervisor is there to advise you in terms of the nuanced choices and activities that you will be expected to execute as part of COM4809. Lastly, your supervisor will also be able to look at redrafts of your assignments. This is to say your supervisor will look at work that you have redraft or reworked based on their comments. This is mostly with an eye towards your portfolio. More about this a little later. Take note, supervisors cannot look at an assignment before it is submitted at assignment drafts. They can only look at re drafts of work you have already submitted. Also remember that your supervisor is not only supervising you, 
They will, on top of all of their other modules and responsibilities, be juggling many Comforator 9 students. This means that you will have to talk with your supervisor to see what is possible in terms of a time frame for reviewing redrafts. As a rule of thumb, supervisors should not be seeing more than one or two redrafts of any aspect. So remember, supervisors cannot keep re-reading -re your work over and over again. You need to get it right and pay very close attention to the comments that they offer. Now, if this sounds daunting, you are right. Research certainly is daunting and even hard. That is normal. I assure you, my first encounter with postgraduate research was not smooth sailing. In fact, I actually remember being, there being some crying involved. The thing is, if you work harder than you ever have, do what we tell you and expect you to do, you will be absolutely fine. It won't be easy, don't get me wrong, but it is possible. You have to work on COM4809 every single week of this year if you want to be successful. The prescribed book and recommended reading is the first step here. You should read your prescribed book through from cover to cover. The reason for this is that you should have a good overview of the research process as a whole even before we start with this module. As you will see a little later on, each assignment is a pit stop or a step in the research process. Each assignment will need to form part of a unified whole at the end of the module, which will be your portfolio. Your focus right now should not be on the assignments of the module, however, but on the content of the module. Take the time now to become acquainted or brush up on the research process and what is expected in this module. Okay, now let's focus on the assignments for the module and see how they slot into one another, as I just mentioned. You have four assignments and a portfolio as the formal assessments for COM4809. Each one of your assignments will be converted into a chapter, which eventually will constitute your research portfolio. So all of these chapters together become your research portfolio. Assignment 1 will become Chapter 1, Introduction and Overview of the Research. The next assignment will become Chapter 2, Literature Review. The next, Chapter 3, Methodology of the Research. Then Chapter 4, The Findings of your Research. As you can see, each assignment is not an island on its own. It's part of a bigger whole, a bigger picture that you need to keep in mind at all times. Then, for your module mark, each assignment and the portfolio contributes. Actually, they contribute almost equally. The portfolio is 60% and the assignments 40% of your module mark. This shows you that everything that you do in this module is important. Do not underestimate any of it. Further to this, you have to score at least 30% as a year mark in order to gain access to the examination for COM4809. 30% does not sound like much now, but think about it. If you miss handing in an assignment, get 0% for one because you did not follow our guidelines on Turnitin submission, or if you simply did not do what you had to in the assignment, you realistically could score below 30% for your year mark and then not be allowed to submit your portfolio as your examination. In that case, we cannot grant you concession. You will, at that point, already fail the module. What you also have to keep in mind is that the assignments are not the only activities that you need to complete for this module. As can be seen in this figure that we have included in Tutorial Letter 101, there are many activities that need to take place between and parallel to assignment submissions. This is why your assignments are spaced out as they are over the year. This is not to give you a rest between assignments. If you take a rest between submitting one assignment and another, you will soon run into trouble in terms of time. No. As soon as you submit one assignment, you need to already be or get busy with the activities that follow to the next assignment. As you can see, time management is of the utmost importance in this module. If you fall behind, it's not necessarily true that you will be able to catch back up. That is seriously very hard.
Please keep up with the timelines and stay ahead of work for this module. It is a lot, but possible, as I have said. Also keep in mind that the portfolio date is non-negotiable and cannot be moved for any reason. Okay, this point is a good bridge to the next few things that I want to discuss with you before we look at the three options that you have for a research topic this year. These are some of the important notes for your assignment. Firstly, all of your assignments must go through the program Turnitin before you submit it formally via MyUNISA. Now, very, very important to note here. You must not supply only a screenshot of the first page of your Turnitin report for the submission you make on MyUNISA. If you do this, you will be penalized. No, the PDF version of the whole Turnitin report must be submitted as your assignment. This means that you have to include absolutely everything in your submission to turn it in. Your table of contents, your list of sources consulted, your declaration, all of it. Because the report that turn it in generates is to be submitted as is to my UNISA. Now, right off the bat here, you're thinking, hold on, does this not mean that my similarity index will be very high if I do this? Well, yes, it can be. But you see, if you interpret your report, you do not have to rely so heavily on the actual similarity index. You will look at what is flagged and why, whether it is plagiarism proper or only incidental similarity. Now, both students and lecturers are forced to take a deep, hard look at your similarity report, not only the similarity index, seeing as your whole report is submitted as your assignment. Please have a look at Tutorial Letter 101 for more on Turnitin. Now, you will be enrolled in the program and will receive instructions as to activation for your account before the end of April. Please also see the deadlines we set for you in terms of the registration of the module. The second very important aspect is the aspect of research ethics. You will have to complete the forms and attach all relevant aspects for approval. These forms will be uploaded to MyUNISA in due course under additional resources. Not everything in those forms will be applicable to everyone. Some will have interviews and they will have to complete informed consent forms for their participants. Some might have an organization as their empirical environment and might need to thus need a letter of permission from the organization. The point is that the requirements will be different for each report. You need to make sure that you adhere to the aspects that you need to. I cannot stress this enough. This could end up being a reason that you fail the module, seeing as the university is very clear on aspects relating to research ethics, which includes plagiarism. You will need to clear a very high bar here. Your ethics documentation will need to be submitted with assignment 3 and your portfolio. Students have in the past actually failed COM 4809 because they forgot to add their ethics form to the portfolio. I know this seems harsh, but please follow the instructions offered in Tutorial Letter 101. Everything is there. If you do as instructed, you will be fine. Furthermore, I want to remind you of two things. Firstly, many students, mostly because of less than ideal time management skill, submit their first drafts of their assignments to us. The first draft of an academic work is never good enough and it never becomes good enough for submission. Trust me on this, professors with many, many years of experience will tell you they do not even submit first drafts of their articles for publication. You have to work rework and then rework a little more each assignment that you submit. It is only once you rework what you have that you are able to spot mistakes, holes in the argumentation and the like, which would cost you a lot of marks unnecessarily if you just submitted your first draft. Just so, remember that you are a communication scholar. Take time to ensure that what you have written down is exactly what you want to say and how you want to say it. Your words are your tools. It is also all that we have to judge your aptitude by. Make sure it represents 
all that you have to offer as a postgraduate student and as a scholar. Right, now for the part that I know all of you have been wishing I would get you, the three options that you have for this year in terms of research. Those of you who have done COM4809 in the past will realize that the requirements have changed completely. Indeed, they have. For COM4809 in 2020, you have to execute, this means you have to do, one of three research projects. We will talk you through these in a little bit more detail in the video for assignment one that will be posted to my UNISA in due course. For now, I just want to give you an overview. So the first two options you will see are similar and then there is a third outlier. Okay, so the first two options each have a semi-complete research proposal attached to them. For option one, you have to do the research as outlined in addendum A of tutorial letter 101. For option two, you have to do the research as outlined in addendum B. We have offered you the bulk of the research direction in these proposals and expect you to customize them to your own ideas and thinking, filling in the blanks that we have purposefully put there. If you do the research supplied as part of option one, you will have to do a qualitative content analysis exploring and describing the conduct of Bal Pottinger in the economic emancipation campaign. You will offer recommendations for the revision of the PRCA and precise ethical codes of conduct as an outcome of your research. If you choose option two, you will execute a qualitative content analysis exploring and describing the propaganda war spearheaded by Bal Pottinger in the economic emancipation campaign. You will be able to customize the outcomes based on this. Both of these research proposals were written on a level on par with postgraduate studies, particularly honors. We hope it offers you inspiration and acts as a springboard for your creativity. It could also be a good bar by which to measure the level of this module and yourself in relation to it. You are free to use the aspects provided in these proposals as is for your assignments or you are allowed to tweak and customize this. It's up to you. For example, you will see in option one, we give you three research questions. You can use these just as they are or you can change them slightly. We give these options to you with the aim of getting you started on the research journey. Use it or tweak it. The third option you will notice does not have a completed proposal as an addendum attached to it. The reason for this is that we are giving you the option of executing a completed research proposal that you have. Some students will have completed modules that have, as their final portfolio examination, a proposal as an outcome of the module. This means students who pass these modules have an actual completed proposal in hand. This option, option three, is for those students. So this option has very clear guidelines and requirements. Please listen carefully. As you will see on screen and also in tutorial letter 101, this option is for those who have a successfully completed proposal. Herein, you have to firstly have an actual proposal. This proposal must be completed as part of another module, for example, COM4802 or COM4806, if those are modules that you took in previous years. The proposal must also be completed. This means that you should not still be busy with that module. You should have completed it. Naturally, your completion would imply that you pass the module, which is what the successful refers to. If you failed a research proposal module, you may not use that failed proposal for COM4809. So, Option three is only for those students whose qualification includes a module where a proposal serves as the final outcome of that module, who have passed that module and thus have a completed proposal in hand, ready for execution. This option is not for you if you have not done a completed proposal module and therefore do not have a completed proposal in hand right now. If you are still doing all five modules in one year, thus excluding yourself based on the first point, 
if you failed your research proposal topic and have not passed it since, or if you still have to take up a topic. Very importantly, this option cannot be used for students who have done COM4809 in the past and want to redo a previous COM4809 topic, for example, communication satisfaction. No, you cannot do a previous year's COM4809 topic here. You have to do either the option one, option two options. This option is only for those students that have their own new research proposal that was drafted when they successfully completed another module as part of their honours studies. If you submit a previous COM4809 topic, like communication satisfaction for example, you will get 0% for your assignments and we will send you back to the drawing board and ask you to pick option 1 or option 2 for your second assignment onwards. In the next few weeks, we want you to please read through Tutorial Letter 101 from cover to cover. Do not skip forward to the section on assignments as you will miss a whole lot of important information that way. Information that might see you get 0% for the assignment if you do not pay attention to them. When you read your tutorial letter through from cover to cover, have a pen and paper at your side and make notes of all the important things that you should do. After this, think about the three options and make a decision as to which one of these three will be best for you for this year. We cannot decide for you. It depends on your aptitude, interests and what sparks a bit of excitement in you when you read it. What you think you will enjoy really getting into this year. In a way, the first option is very structured, the second option a little bit more open and the last completely open. You will need to decide if you want more or less structure, more or less freedom of choice and what that would mean. Okay, so this offers you an overview of the module. We hope it clears up some of the questions that you might have at this stage. If you're still unsure about an aspect relating to the module as a whole, please only just let us know. We will open up the discussion forums on MyUNISA soon and hope you will interact with us there. Please also note that MyUNISA is used extensively in this module. Have a look at the FAQs, the frequently asked questions on the module page, additional resources that we post and any announcements that we put forward. On this point of announcements, I just want to draw your attention to the link to Form 1 that was posted via an announcement. Those of you who have a problem accessing the form from the link in the tutorial letter can access the form from the link in the announcement. We wish you all the best in this course and truly would like to see you succeed. Do your best!